We have the opportunity to get a behind-the-scenes look at the Pyrotechnics Guild International Convention that happened in Gillette at the Camplex for the week of August 10th through the 16th. The Pyrotechnics Guild International was celebrating its 50th year and is an independent, worldwide, nonprofit organization of amateur and professional fireworks enthusiasts. We first spoke with the PGI's president, Paul Smith. I got started roughly 50 years ago this year, 1969, by a group of people that really enjoyed fireworks and were in the process of making them. And they were hobbyists and they uh, worked to make shells and then they wanted to compare their shells. And uh, it started with them just shooting shells and comparing them with each other. And that expanded out to when they organized to be an actual group and have conventions like this that we're doing here in Gillette. The group is made up of the whole diversity of the American population and international members. So we've got doctors, lawyers, farmers, bankers, you name it. It's the whole spectrum of the populace of our country that are interested in pyrotechnics. And some of them like to make it, some of them like to sell them and buy and, and have stores for them. Some of them are display companies. It's the whole gamut of those involved with fireworks in the U.S. The purpose of the convention is it's our main or our only real event that we get together collectively. We have publications and a bulletin that goes out to the membership, but this is the one time we come together. This is where we conduct our business, and this is where we come together to communicate and share ideas and have workshops, and then the public displays that we get to enjoy where different companies come in and put on the best of the best of fireworks, and uh, we get to enjoy that, pick up ideas, and then have time talking about that here because we're here all week. The public displays uh, depends on the site. They have the option to have three nights of fireworks or four nights for public displays. Gillette wanted four nights, so then what we do is go out and recruit and talk to display companies and ask if they'd like to come present here and we have a, a budgeted amount to put toward display fireworks and then contract with them to come in and put displays on. Of course, because this is the PGI convention, everybody wants to show their stuff and look really solid. So we oftentimes get way more in value in fireworks than what we're giving them contract wise. So it, it works out good for us. Fantastic displays, they get to show what they can do and we learn from each other in the process. They're gonna be more unique because they're gonna pull out the best of their best and display it. They're gonna show some of their more creative things. And because of the setup here, generally they're gonna have a, a, a broader spread of where they can put the display and set it out at. And uh, so that adds to it. <clears throat> Plus they have the advantage of working within the convention situation that's a little easier sometimes in a public display area where they come in there and have to set up within a day or two and then move out. We're here, we're here all week and can work with it a little longer than that. One of the things that we're concerned about and focusing on is who's gonna be the next generation. So we have a, a program specifically because of the requirements that are there as far as age restrictions on who can deal with fireworks and stuff like that. And basically it's 18 years and above can be on fireworks displays and to be a lead you have to be 21. So our group started the Junior Pyro Association or JPA as we call it and these are young kids below the age of 18 that get adult supervision and actually on Wednesday night because of working with the fireworks under adult supervision during this week they put on a public display and that gives them an opportunity to see what it's like and begin to understand that even before they can actually go on the displays that would be off-site here. And so that gets them interested, they get training and stuff and they're t they have their own president and a little bit of self-governance within that uh, helps them to grow up in the group and have some participate other than just sit and watch like the spectators would. We had the pleasure of speaking with a young PGI member as well who went through the junior program and is already winning competitions. We got involved about 13 years ago, I'd say, for the least. Uh, my grandparents were big fans of fireworks, and they started looking up stuff, found the convention, and about in 2006, we came as public to watch, 
2010, I came to my first convention with my grandparents and my brother. And then 2013, it was all of us, and I was in the Junior Pyrotechnics Association on the board from 2013 through 2017. So five years running on board, four treasurer, one president. And then I started competing last year in competition, which is right behind me for Rocket Press. You can do all kinds of different fun stuff with it. And it's, it's been incredible to have the, like watching from the public side to getting into everything else. It's, it's been a good time. So I would say, I think it was like probably 17 or 18 years ago, they started, they noticed that the kids didn't have much to do. So they started to group up the kids and said, hey, we can go light some firecrackers over here, do this on this day. And eventually the Junior Pyrotechnics Association formed and they got an opening to do a show after a number of years where they could use Class C, which is consumer. And they were able to start choreographing with music, um, getting donations of Class B shells, which consumer customers cannot buy. You can only build. And then they kept building and building and building over the years. And now we have a full running board, very organized. They do fundraising of lemonade and coffee with the convention. They're always open to donating. They love seeing the kids be able to get involved because now they can stay busy all week long. And they get a pool party after all their hard work for their show that's usually on Wednesday nights the next day. And then they can relax for the rest of the week and they get to take classes as well on how to do stuff. So the rocket press is a hydraulic press. You set it at a different PSI depending on what size motor you're going to press. We call rocket motors. It's not a rocket until you put it on a stick. Um, and then you have to build it up in increments. If you press everything together at once, it's not going to have a good consistent pressure as you build. And it won't fly as well as all the great rockets you would see from the public side and from the PGI side. It's not many that people know the name of. It's called a girandola. And it spins in a horizontal first and then it goes vertical at a slight horizontal angle. And I did uh, one main stage, it's 33 inches in diameter. It's basically, uh, you could look at an ice cream bucket, for example, but make it 33 inches wide. Second stage was 17, and the top was two rockets pinned together like this, and they spin in a helix. Each stage would separate the higher they go. So that won me first place. Um, I think one of the biggest things is, is that no matter where you go, you can keep learning. There's a lot of camaraderie. Everyone's really open to sharing information and it's, it's been an awesome learning experience and I hope one day I can come back with my kids and then they can get to experience it as well. There's a, a wide range of uh, workshops in that. A lot of them will focus on how people make a certain product or item, and they'll have a workshop where you can hands-on make it yourself. Some of them are about making shelves and different type of shelves. Some of them are about the history of fireworks and how things have developed over the years. Uh, this year, because it's our 50th, some of them specifically are focusing on where we were 25 years ago and, and the progression we've had historically. So it's a wide range and uh, they vary in topic. Some of them deal with live materials, so they're actually making fireworks. Some of them are talking about the chemistry of it and what goes into the fireworks. And uh, then some of them, we even have some ladies that have some things where the wives are here with their husbands that really like pyro and the wives, wives enjoy it, but they don't spend as much time with it. So they got some crafting things that they're doing. Well, you're gonna have a, a, a variation of the firework between a spherical wall or a cylinder, or there are some fireworks that are rocket with a heading on the top of it. And basically the predominant uh, component is gonna be the black powder, which is used to lift the firework into the air. And then that variation of black powder is used to make a burst powder that then explodes the shell out, and creates the pattern. And then you're gonna have the parts that are in there that we call stars that are color in nature or maybe a sound producing uh, device. And you hear that coming as it explodes out of there. Uh, so you've got the basic containment of a cardboard sphere or a, a cylinder and then the ingredients packed inside there. 
then you have fusing, and then of course you've got to have a time fuse so that once it lifts it out of there and throws it in the air, it doesn't go off right away, but there's a delay and that's a fuse. And <clears throat> you watch a firework shell closely, you can see just a hint of light as it climbs up. And that's the time fuse burning to the point that then it ignites the c contents. PGI member David Machino has a little more on how fireworks are made. Uh, this is the All Stars manufacturing area. We gather here approximately a week before the public grand display to be held this Friday, and we build an entire display on site of nothing but American products made right here, and we shoot the shells Friday. Now we have stars, we have bursts. A lot of the art hasn't changed for a thousand years. A lot of still gunpowder-based comps. We have used some technology to upgrade it. It used to be when you would hand paste an eight, 10, 12 inch shell, for every inch of additional pacing would be another hour of time. So you could put hours in. But what we have, this is called a WASP, uh, Widman's Automated Shell Pasting System. And this will allow us to pay some of these shells in a matter of an, uh, 20 to 30 minutes. The larger shells naturally take longer. Uh, down the road here, you're gonna find a 36 cent shell. He's been pasting on that thing for three days. You have to let it dry in lifts. That thing we can't uh, cut a, a corner on. It, it still takes time, but the actual hand pasting and rubbing, this is a time saver and it really helps us do the work, especially since we build nothing but large shells, eight inch and larger. So for Friday's display, we'll have eight, 10, 12, 16, 24, and 36 diameter shells. Uh, on this site, we're making right at 54. This year was different. We'd normally make about 140, 150, but it's the uh, 50th anniversary of the Guild. So we had a lot of specialty shells come into the uh, mix that we will fire as part of a combined display. A lot of those shells were multi-break. They're Italian or multi-style. Some of these guys have been working on these shells for a month. And then they will do the final assembly here. And then we will be responsible for the choreography, getting the shell loaded and firing. I get to spend a week with the sanest people I know. Uh, you meet every profession. We have doctors, lawyers, mechanics, engineers, to janitors, salesmen, auto mechanics. But we come here for the joy of fireworks. We have our differences, but they're from all over the world. And there's always something you can learn about this. No one knows it all. And we share our ideas, our thoughts, and we have great camaraderie. It's a great time. Well, we move uh, every year just because the members like to go to different places and see different things. It is a family event, as you mentioned, and so forth. And so if you go to the same place every time, they've already done some of those things. So go someplace new and they have other things that they can go off site and do and so forth. Gillette's nice because there's a lot of stuff around here they can go off site to see. It's nice because they have so much camping available, which our group really likes to do. And it's nice because they have so much area here that we can work with. And the more area we have, the more we can incorporate things and do it without being crunched in. And uh, one of our main focuses in our mission is doing things safely with fireworks. And one of the key proponents of safety is distance. And oftentimes the reason you see an incident happening is because safety protocols weren't followed as far as were you right next to it, were you safe distance away for it, and what happened. Gillette gives us those distances because of the good size that this facility has here. Well, as president, I really enjoy the fact that I can see all these different things. Some of them I'm interested, some that I just enjoy watching, and some don't hold much interest to me, but I see I get to enjoy all of them because I see people enjoying what they like. And so as the part of the board and the president, we help facilitate so that all these things come together. And that's part of what makes the displays and competition interesting is seeing all this collectively being done. And we're helping pull it together for them and 
just enjoying fireworks. As you know, an audience oftentimes responds very interactively with a fireworks display and stuff like that, and uh, that's rewarding. And so the convention becomes that kind of situation as well.